There are many people looking for knowledge. Knowledge how to recognize narcissists. You don't even have to look very far. There are thousands or even ten thousands of self-help gurus out there teaching about narcissism. Some are highly educated, some are not. Some are popular, some are unknown. Even churches are now speaking out against narcissism. You have a lot of people out there who want to know more about, spirit, know more about spirituality. They want to know more about what to do with difficult situations. But there's one thing I don't hear people talk about often. And I'm not saying I'm the only one that mentioned it, but until now, I haven't encountered someone who specifically mentioned it directly like I did. That is the following. The number one examination you need to conduct on everyone you encounter is the following. You need to ask yourself the following question about an individual. And you need to examine the answer to this question. And the question is, is this individual willing to look themselves in the mirror and decide they want to be better? One question, let me repeat it. Is this individual willing to look themselves in the mirror and decide they want to be better? If the answer to that is yes, then it's safe for you to be involved with them. Whether on an intimate level, when it comes to having the same hobbies, or having a similar job, or whether it's on a sexual level, but pray about this first, or whether it's just on a business level or on a community level, an individual is only safe to be involved with if they are willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide they want better for themselves. If an individual is not even willing to look in the mirror, then you know you have a problem right over there. And this is very important. This is one of the first things you need to examine about someone. But don't you realize that most people never ask this question? Especially when it comes to uh, relatives or people they consider friends or people they grew up with. You should ask this question even about your own parents. To see if your own parents are safe uh, to be around. Some of you had parents who did the practical things for you, feeding you, clothing you, teaching you basic things about the, the community. But now that you're older, you realize, hold on a minute, mom and, mom and dad are not willing to move forward. Okay, they had children, but there's no excuse. They could have advanced further in life. When you figure out that your own parents are not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide they want to be better, what makes you think your parents want you to be better? Think about it. If they don't even have enough self-worth to say to themselves, I want better for myself, what, what makes you think they want better for you? So this was, this was going to happen. If you have parents who are not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I want better, they stayed in cycles and patterns for way too long, or they have all those weird antisocial traits that they don't want to admit, or maybe they were even abusive towards you at some points, whether it was physical or verbal, and they just are brushing it off. Whatever it is, whether it's a light issue or a very heavy, intense issue, it doesn't matter. If your parents are not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better, now listen, if they did whatever they could for you, they did whatever they could for you. Be thankful for that. If they were abusive and neglectful, be glad you're older now and you, you can uh, keep your distance from them. In any case, no matter if they did whatever they could for you or they were neglectful, it doesn't matter. If they are not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better for myself, then your parents are not safe to be involved with. Some of you don't want to hear this. Some of you, your parents are your enemies. Oh, but this is a conversation a lot of people don't want to have. Think about it. If, if your parent was abusive and neglectful, what's going on? They are not willing to look at themselves and admit that they need help to improve. They don't want to go into therapy. They don't want to admit they have issues. They don't want to admit that they've been harmed or scarred by things they went through. They don't want to improve. They don't want actual real help. 
they just want an escape and when they can't escape they want an outlet for their darkness that's what's going on with them and unfortunately some parents use their own children as a target now if your parents didn't use you as a target but you better use other people as a target don't rejoice they shouldn't be using people as a target anyway if your parents use you as a target be glad they expose themselves and get away from them now that you're older make sure you go into therapy and that you heal from the harm they did to you if they did not use you as a target but only use other people as a target you should be more afraid now now i'm not promoting fear but if you want to know a reason to be afraid a reason to be scared if your parents never use you as an outlet but use other people beware the moment you their offspring improves beyond how far they they ended up they're going to turn on you like never before some parents just never turned on you turned on their children because the children never exceeded them some parents are actively sabotaging their children by either overindulging them or by uh, being neglectful towards them and others are indirectly sabotage their children by never acknowledging their achievements and never pushing them to, to, become, better, to become better people whether the neglect is direct or indirect is still neglect I want you to ask yourself that question very seriously are your parents willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide I want better for myself if that answer is no then why do you still call them why do you share your issues with them why do you treat your parents like bene benevolent therapists why they are not even willing to look at their own issues some people say Rashid you need to honor your mother and father because that's what church taught us okay I don't care that church taught you that I don't even care it's written in the Bible look at the context does it apply to your situation if your parents are not honorable they shouldn't receive honor from you and this is something a lot of people are not willing to hear some of you it's your parents are sabotaging you Behind your back, they're murmuring, complaining about you because of psychic violence. Behind your back, they're cursing you out. Behind your back, they are mocking your dreams and your plans. Why? Because they never reached anything in their life for themselves. Or they went through a lot of hardship and I want things to be hard on you too. Or because they simply have issues they don't want to face and now they're blaming it on their children saying, I regret having children. They're blaming all their issues in life on the fact that they had children. Even though... They want to have grandchildren, they want all the benefits of having children, but they want to regret having to be responsible for their children. Now, this is not all parents. Some parents are good people who did whatever they could, despite having issues. Let your parents be happy. But if that's not the case, admit it's not the case. Apart from parents, also ask the same thing about your siblings, your brother or sister that you grew up with. Or ask yourself this also about the other people in the neighborhood you grew up with. Ask yourself this also about your classmates or fellow students or about your employer or even about your own children or grandchildren. It's time for us to cut the emotional crap. If someone is not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I want better, they are dangerous. How do you think so many people end up homeless? They end up addicted or they end up with diseases in life. I'm telling you why. They keep on entrusting themselves to people they should have shaken off a long time ago. Haven't you noticed that often when someone dies of sickness or homelessness or of a violent tragedy, the relatives go to the funeral well-dressed, well-spoken, crying a lot of tears, they come with all types of lovely stories about the deceased and now they're gone and now you think hold on a minute if you have so many great stories about the one that just passed away why didn't you cherish those memories with that individual when they were still alive why didn't you give them flowers or, or, or all those lovely speeches when they were still alive why is it now they passed away now suddenly you show to the whole world how affectionate you, you can be towards them I'm telling you Many families, not all, but many families are more willing to invest in your funeral than in your breakthrough. Oh, let me repeat that. Many families are more willing to invest in your funeral than in your 
breakthrough. And this is something, this is gets through to you. And apart from where someone is willing to look in the mirror and move forward, if, if someone is willing to look in the mirror and move forward, then ask the second question. Are they realistic enough to let go of people who are keeping them back? Let's say you, let's say you meet someone from the opposite sex and you consider them a potential spouse. Let's say this man or woman is willing to look themselves in the mirror and say, I want better. You think, yay, fine. But are they realistic enough to admit, okay, I want to be better. I'm willing to self-reflect. But are the people around me the same way? Because some people are willing to self-reflect and become better people. But they fail to see that the people around them are not. If you're dealing with someone who's willing to self-reflect and decide in they want to be better, but they can't see that people around them are just faking it or they have no interest in becoming better, then you're still dealing with an individual that's risky for you. Because they're holding on to people that will keep them back. So eventually when you're involved with them on the long term, you can be held back by the fact that they have people holding them back. And because they're held back by people, they indirectly will have that same effect on you. Those are the two practical questions you need to ask about the people you're involved with. One. Are they willing to look themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better? And secondly, are they willing to let go of the people around them who are not willing to look themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better? Those are the two questions you should always ask about other people. And those are the questions seldom asked. People talk about boundaries. They talk about enforcing limits. People talk about morals and ethics. They talk about values, how people are raised, manners. People talk about all types of stuff except those two main practical things. I don't care how kind, how polite, and how well-mannered someone is. If that individual is not willing to look themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better, this is what's going to happen. Anytime trouble comes, they run. They come with polite and well-mannered excuses to run. If they can't run, they will snatch you up. Yes, that same polite, well-mannered, kind individual that you've embraced that always respects your quote-unquote boundaries, that same individual will set you up in harm's way just so that the negative attention goes to you so they can escape. Or, if they can't set you up, they'll, they'll explode on you. I hope you never went through this, but sometimes you encounter people who will tell you to your face they don't like you, they can't stand you. And when you ask why, they say, I don't care. I don't have a reason why I don't like I just don't like you. What's going on? Those people don't want to move forward. They don't want to fix themselves. So their issues are catching up with them. And because they don't want to deal with the psychic tension of all those issues, they want an outlet. That's why they decided, oh, I can dump, I can dump my psychological filth on that guy over there. So the only reason they have for not liking you is the fact that you're an easy target for them to dump all their issues upon. And some people even go so far that they make you the enemy of their life. They make it their mission to attack you or to exterminate you and those around you just because it's a form of self-medication for them. Some people will become your enemy just because they don't want to face their own issues. And that's what eventually happens when someone is not willing to look themselves in the mirror and say, I want to be better. That means that they don't want to take responsibility for their own well-being. They don't want to take responsibility for their own safety. If they're not willing to take responsibility for their own safety, what makes you think they're going to take responsibility for yours? If they don't even care enough about themselves to want to be better, they want to be safe and sane, what makes you think they want them to see you safe and sane? A lot of us assume that people have self-worth and that they want what's best for them and what's best for others. No, 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 no. That's not the case. A lot of people don't even care about themselves. They don't. That's why they're so clingy and so codependent on society. They're so clingy and codependent on society because they have no self-worth. So plain and simple. The moment you recognize something is off around here, they're going to turn on you for mentioning it. Because they don't, they don't want to face or deal with anything. They just want to be left alone and they want other people to shut up so that they can have ease in daily life without having to face anything. 
they're not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better. So they don't have a responsible, constructive attitude. If they lack this responsible, constructive attitude, it means they lack self-worth. And that means that under the right pressure, they will turn on you. Under the right pressure, they will sell you out. Under the right pressure, they will become your enemy and seek to exterminate you. A lot of people who pass away, or better said, a lot of people who were murdered, whether they were murdered by their spouses or their best friends or their other relatives or they were murdered by other people close to them, like fellow employees, whatever, because most people that are murdered, are mur the, the perpet they knew the perpetrator. Most homicide victims knew their perpetrator. Most of the people that passed away, if Jesus would resurrect them from the dead now, for you to talk to them, Christ is not doing that. Everyone will be resurrected when Christ returns. But if Jesus would resurrect a lot of those people and you would talk to them, they would warn you. They would tell you, listen, man, I was killed. I was murdered. I had no idea they had so much anger towards me. I had no idea they were capable of doing this. But I didn't notice it when it was too late. And some of us here didn't even notice it. We were shot suddenly or we were stabbed suddenly. It's only now that... Uh, Jesus has resurrected us, we realize what happened to us. And there's no way for us to uh, undo what happened and to go back and finish our lives. Our lives were, were, were cut short. We were too naive. We were too easy, too easy going. We were too forgiving when it comes to noticing red flags. Okay, apart from this parable, there is nothing wrong at all with being forgiving. Being too forgiving is an expression. That means you're not realistic in how to manage your affairs. You, there's no such thing as literally being too forgiving. Okay? You have to forgive all the time because forgiveness is, is about you. What I mean is too often you're willing to reconcile with people that we should keep at a distance. Look, the people that will hurt you and never admit that they've done, they've done you wrong, nor apologize are the people who don't want to fix themselves and, and improve. So if you just ask that question, are they willing to improve by self-reflection? If you ask that question, that saves you a lot of tragedy. If you ask yourself the second question, if they're also willing to let go of people that are keeping them back, if you ask those two questions about everyone you encounter, you spare yourself a lot of trouble. Okay, you may ask Brother Sheet, what if the answer is no? If the answer is no, then now you know that you can only deal with, people, with those people for practical things. Either you work with them at the job, or either you have to go to them because they are a car mechanic, or, or you have to say hi and bye, or you do small talk with them. If you meet them in the streets, they know that that's the only way you can relate to them. If they're not willing to have this constructive and beneficial attitude towards themselves, then don't engage with them on the long term and avoid them as much as possible. A lot of great talents never got the chance to use their talents to benefit the human community. You know why? Their, their lives were cut short by people who didn't want to move forward and they escalate on them. Think about Joseph. Why did Joseph's brothers turn on Joseph? Because Joseph's brothers were not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and decide, I want better. They weren't willing to face anything. They, they didn't have enough self-worth nor value for themselves to decide, we want better. We want to move forward. We want to become better people. We want to increase. We want to be beneficial to others. So if they were not even willing to have that dose of self-worth for themselves, what makes you think they would value someone else? They, they wouldn't. So now you have Joseph, this 70-year-old guy, filled with ambition, filled with self-reflection. But the error of Joseph was, he was too naive. He didn't realize that his siblings were people who didn't want to take responsibility to move forward. Joseph's brothers had no intention of moving ahead at all. And now they have this sibling younger than them, having all those dreams, all this ambition. Ex being exposed to their little brother with all those ambitions and dreams reflect on how stagnant 
and how ridiculous their own attitude was. And because they were people who made up their mind, were not going to self-reflect, were just going to be left alone, that's why they were anchored by Joseph's positive and constructive attitude. And that's why instead of looking at themselves and realizing, you know what? If even our little brother can have so much ambition in life, why are we so stagnant and backwards? You know what? Let's be inspired by Joseph and become better people. No. Instead of that, they escalated on Joseph, wanted to kill him. It was at the last moment that one of them said, no, no, we're not going to kill him. Let's make money off of him. And, and uh, Joseph uh, remained alive. So Joseph's story should warn us. If someone is not willing to look at themselves in the mirror and move forward, watch out. And if they're, if, and second question, if they fail to see that they need to let go of certain people, also beware of them. Because they may become, may become liability to you. You can still minister unto them if they're willing to move forward. But if, if you don't realize yet that you need to let some people go, you have to be watchful. Well, okay. Always ask yourself those two questions. Uh, keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.